Hello everyone, welcome back to another video with Arduino. Today, we're going to be using the 7 segment display again, but we're going to be encompassing a greater number of characters and numbers. So, as you can see on my 7 segment display, it'll be all the numbers from 0 to 9, as well as the all the letters up to letter F. And these are the numbers or characters in base 16. So I'll tell you what that means a little bit more, and as well as what computer number systems are, and then we'll go into the wiring diagram and eventually the code. Before we get started, just like my previous video, which you can see from the number 0 to 9, it's a bit more in-depth with what the 7 segment display is, we're using this 7 segment display, let me, it's I'm pointing to it right here, and basically it has a bunch of different segments connected to a bunch of different pins, and by controlling the output, we can determine which segments in the 7 segment display lights up. So that's how we are forming the different numbers and letters, and we can see that in our explanation of the code. So now let's look at the number systems as well as what our code and wiring diagram actually means. Okay, so here's our wiring diagram. It's the same as the previous one, except with this one, the code is going to be changed so that it accounts for numbers in base 16. So I'll just talk about the basics of the number system while um, you take a look at our wiring diagram. And just to reiterate, um, notice how each of the segments are connected to their respective pin. So if pin 2 receives an output, that will trigger, follow the blue line, it will trigger segment E, and therefore segment E will receive a response. Same with this orange wire. If the third pin receives an output, I'm going to follow it, and segment D will receive an output. All right, so we're going to take a basic look at computer number systems, and they're basically that they're basically different ways that computers can represent numbers, doing arithmetic, creating addresses, and an important and integral part for computer science. So, with um, the number system, there are a few different um, systems of choice. We can do binary, which computers mostly use. Do octal, which is base 8. We can do hexadecimal, which is base 16. And then we can also do decimal, which is base 10. That's the one we're most familiar with, decimal. So let's just go over the basics first. So let's go by bi over binary. So binary, you can represent the numbers 0 or 1. And these can form long chains of numbers that represent an entire value. So we have this value, let's say like this, you might have seen numbers like this, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. But like, what does this entire, what does this actually mean It's really difficult for us to understand, especially when we use the decimal system where it goes from 0 to 10. And likewise, so we have this number. And one way that you can tell this is in binary, is that because each of the numbers or the digits falls into this initial range. So it's 0 or 1. Each of the numbers does not pass surpass 1 or does not go below 0. So this is a binary number. Now let's look at decimal. We're going to skip octal for today. Decimal means 10. So there will be 10 numbers in this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And you may be tempted to go to 10, right, because you're familiar with 10. But if you look at 10, we can extract the digits of 10. 1 and 0, and you find those digits inside this number system. So we want to avoid numbers that when you extract the digits, you can find them in the number system, right? So likewise, a number like 90, you can find the 9 and you can find the 0 in the decimal, right? A number like 89, you can find both values inside the decimal system. So therefore, decimal will only go up to 0 to 9 because 10 would be insignificant, right? You can just deconstruct this. Now we're going to go to the next one. This is hexadecimal, the number that we're, we are um, displaying, the number system that we're going to be displaying. And it goes from, it has 15 numbers. 
or no, it has, it goes up to the value of 15, but it has 16 numbers in total. So I want you to think for a second, you have this decimal system, right? So let's say this is a whole number, right? I'm just using the spaces for clarification. So we have zero, right? That's found in the decimal number system. We have one, maybe we'll throw in an eight. You can find that in the number system as well. But what if we did a number like 12? I don't want you to extract the digits of 12, but I want you to find a number 12 inside this initial range. And obviously that doesn't work for decimal, right? For decimal, you would have to extract the certain digits and say, well, 12, the number 12 itself is decimal. But if you want to find a, a digit value that is valued at 12, that's just not possible because the decimal system for specific digits only goes from zero to nine. Well, with hexadecimal, that is possible, but you might be thinking there's no way we can represent number a, a singular digit by using a, sing, a singular digit only using one digit, right? Because this uses two digits and it's supposed to represent a single digit. So then we start moving on to letters. F is valued at 15. Hexadecimal means, so there's going to be 16 numbers and this value is at 15. So with hexadecimal, now you can model numbers where the digits are specific letters and those will be the singular digits. So let's say with binary, right? You can find this decimal, you can do a number like this. But with hexadecimal, do and though this is a bit confusing you can actually represent these numbers you can convert them from one to another it's like um, there's a spe there, there are specific formulas but it's a bit difficult so if you guys are interested in that definitely leave a comment and i can review that so you see with this this hexadecimal number has letters like has the letter with their respective value. So if we were to break apart these digits, it would be 38F9A01B. And if we were to find the actual decimal values of each of these, this would be the plain old 38, but F would be instead 15, A would instead be 10, 0 would be 0, 1 would be 1, and then B would be 11. So these would be the respective digits, all represented in a singular digit. It's a bit confusing to understand at first, but all you have to basically understand is that each of these characters represent different numbers in their singular digit for their respective number system. And likewise, if you were trying to represent something in a base 10 number system, you can't put like random letters in a base 10 because it'll be looking for letters like B and A in the decimal system. And obviously that just doesn't exist. Okay, so that's the basics of it. And what we're going to be displaying is, as you can see here, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So all the base 16 number system. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the code and um, I'm just gonna do a basic review since I reviewed this more in depth in my previous video with the seven segment display from zero to nine. But essentially each of the numbers here, they correspond to a specific segment and the, this corresponds to the specific pins with this being the output. So one would be receiving a signal, zero would be not receiving a signal. So if one, if if the pin 2 receives a signal, segment E will be turned on. So as you can see, segment E will be turned on. If if 3, you can see it matches corresponding. This is the second um, item in the list, or the first item and in, first index in the list. You can see 3. 3 is going to receive an output. What is 3 associated with? C. And C, so C is going to receive an output. So it would be E, C, and then you would just continue down this um, array. And if you're wondering how I found these associations, you just look here. So as you can see, this is the pin 2. If we trace the blue line 
we see that it leads to segment E. And same thing, 2 corresponds with E. If we go to pin, uh, pin 3, you can see with this orange um, with this orange wire over here, it corresponds to segment D, and this is why it corresponds with segment D. If you're confused at all, definitely leave a comment, and I'll try my best to answer it. So um, we did 0 to 9 in the previous video, so I'm just going to go over the specifics of the letters. So in fact, there's actually a ton of different ways you can use the seven segment display. There's so many different, um, I guess, setups with it. And um, one of the letters that you can definitely display are letters A, B, C, D, E, and F. So I also included the capitalization here just to show the range that can be accepted. So with A, right, we have over here, um, what we want to display is, if I'm tracing my mouse, you can see here, we want to display this shape. I'll also edit that into the video. But essentially, I'm just going to go over two examples. So we want to give a signal to 2, which corresponds to E. So we want to give E a signal over here. We also want to give segment 4, I mean pin 4, which corresponds to segment C. We want to give segment C an output. We also want to give segment, we want to give pin 6, which corresponds with the DP. We can also add a DP over here. Um, it, it, it doesn't really do much for the actual seventh segment. Um, oh, no, I apologize. Segment B will receive an output. Corresponding again, 8 corresponds to F. That will receive an out, F will receive an output as well. So as you can see, these two are aligned, are receiving an output. We want 9 to receive an output, which corresponds with G. And we also want 7. We also want pin 7 to receive an output. You can see that over here. And that corresponds with segment A. And therefore, we can display the letter A. Same thing with the letter B. Um, I'll give you a second just to fact check it. So we have B over here. And we have the corresponding arrays over here. So with B, which is four, two, three, four, and five. So six and seven will receive no output. And six and seven correspond to segment B and A. And that makes sense. B and A will not receive an output. And thus we can trace the lowercase b. Now going back, um, we have a void setup. So basically just iterate through um, our pin array over here and associate that with the specific pins. So you see pin A going from 0 to 8. So it would be this will be receiving output, this is output, this is output, this is output, etc. Just um, simplifies the process. And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go iterate through this two dimensional array because an array is normally one dimensional. Right, so what if you have an array of these arrays, right? This is what's happening over here. These are called two-dimensional arrays. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go from 0 to 16, or the 17 values here. So 0 to 16, right? 0 is counted as a number. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. In total, that's 17 numbers, right? Because 1 to 16 is 16, and then plus zero, that's counted as a value. So we're going to iterate through this array. So we're going to start off at A, which is going to be zero. And then we're going to iterate through this array and designate each number to have an output to the pin, just like we've been doing in our own thought process. So let's just look at how the loop logic works. We're going to start off with this one. We're going to start off with index zero. Okay, so um, pin 2 will receive an output, which corresponds to E. Now we're going to move on, plus 1 um, at index 1 corresponds to 3. Pin D, uh, segment D will receive an output, so on and so forth. And then we'll move on to, after we reach the end of this, then we're going to add 1 to A, 
And now we'll move on to the second um, array in the 2D array. We're going to start at segment zero. Two will receive no output. Three will receive no output. Four will receive an output. And then just continue down the array. And once you run it, uh, you can also play around with this de delay. The these are milliseconds. So like if you want to make it faster, you can do 40. But in the next video, we're going to look at how to make it faster and slower um, through physical control on the circuit board. So you can also play around with this value. But once you upload your code, you should receive the output. All right, so that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. In the next videos, we're going to be looking at how to manipulate the display of the of the seven segment display, making it faster, making it slower, using the um, using different modules. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.